It's me, it's me, it's that KNG, and it's that time of the bastard month once again, where I take a look at all the WTF moments from WWE Survivor Series. Ha 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 ha! And before you all go to the comment section and say, oh, he didn't do the pre show. Well, I don't do the pre show because the pre show isn't as good as the main show. If something doesn't deserve to be on the main show, quite frankly, it's not worth my time or efforts. So fing shove it up your ass. <laughs> but breaking news, I've got a queen. You might know her from such signs as face f me fin. No flips, just fist me. Come here, rude boy boy, is you big enough? That's right, my queen is Felicia. Say hello to Felicia, everybody. Hello, Vim. So we start off the show with a massive f***ing surprise. Michael Cole was not there, Malro Ranallo was on commentary, and I was Wanking myself into my blood sock. Yes, I do have one. You like internet virgins out there. <laughs> Just like Funaki used to say, I suppose Mauro can now call himself number one WWE announcer. Number one. But no, that dream was shortly squashed by Maggle himself when he reared his ugly f***ing head back into our ears. They used the raw stage, even though Survivor Series was quite clearly a dual brand Papa View. It's not as if they had raw 24 hours later. Oh no, wait. Yes, they f***ing did. The lazy bastards couldn't be asked to take down one stage and put up another, so they just used the same for Survivor Series and then raw. You lazy bastards. F***ing f***s. Who attacked Nikki? Who cares? Oh no, but I suppose Charlotte could. <laughs> In the middle of the ring, didn't give it away at all. Did it. But at the end of the day, who really does care? Natalia got that massive, loud, hometown baby face pop, and everything was lovely. Ah, ah. It's John O'Clock, motherfuckers! Get in there! He's back on the bloody man! And we have that moment where John says, How can Nikki Bella coexist against Carmella? You don't coexist against somebody, you coexist with them. Despite the fact I'm quite clearly the modern day embodiment of William Shakespeare, I can't fing think of the word that directly goes against coexist, so therefore I. Insert another word there that's more applicable, like you go against them. Either way, he said the wrong f***ing thing. What a tosser. <laughs> Big Naya taps WTF. She's been pushed as this massive f***ing monster that squashes everything in sight. And then there she is, tapping like a little biatch. That doesn't make any sense. She shouldn't have been tapping. She's big and tough and strong. Shouldn't be tapping this early on. She's barely got going, and they've already made her look weak. WTF. Here I am playing the part of many children across the world. Ma'am. What does tossing off mean? Yes, I bet Vince McMahon absolutely f***ing loved it when Mick Foley brought up the fact that tossing off means something else than just throwing someone off something. Like, you know, Mick Foley being tossed off the cell by Undertaker. For those of you who don't know, tossing off means to wank. Ooh. Where you've got the cell instant and you've got tossing off, I suppose, the Undertaker is dead man wanking, not dead man walking, dead man wanking. Blotting, old blotter red, you know, bugger red, blotting red. He shouldn't be blotting red, he should go to the doctor's if he's doing that. David Otunga finally wearing a pissing suit at work, the unprofessional git. The end is night, the end is night, f***ing run away, the end is night, night. Michael Cole claimed that Sami Zayn is 3-0 against The Miz. Quite frankly, this is f***ing bollocks if you go back to Extreme Rules this year, where The Miz defeated Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and Cesaro in the same bloody fatal four-way match, you'll see that The Miz has indeed defeated Sami Zayn. Defeating him in that fatal four-way match is more impressive than just defeating him in that singles match, therefore it should have been brought up. Maggle. Maggle, Maggle. Maggle, Maggle, Maggle. It's John O'Clock again, motherfuckers! He's back in the f***ing double! This time we have John comparing Sami Zayn to an Everlast punching bag, something that can take a lot of punishment, but never wins any titles. Sami Zayn, NXT champion. That's a title. F*** you, John! Even Maggle was correcting John Maggle Cole correcting somebody on commentary. That means one thing, mother f***ers. Grab two of each animal and head for the bastard border. The end is night. The end is night. F***ing run away. The end is night. Night. Right, this f***ing moment makes sense in my mind. If it doesn't make any sense to you, well, f*** you, buddy. F*** 
Fuck you indeed. We cut to the locker room where Dean Ambrose was apparently watching a live feed of Survivor Series. However, when he appeared on screen, the TV that he was watching the live feed on showed a Survivor Series logo. Surely, if he was watching a live feed of Survivor Series, Dean, who the camera was on at the time, should have appeared on that television. Is he invisible? Is he a witch? Or are they just trying not to break kayfabe? Meh. It's time for some grammar slam with King Ross. CM Punk, move out the f***ing way. I've got a degree in journalism, you soft bastard. I could tap ye out as well, couldn't I? Oh, 60 seconds, there you go. Oh, wow, left, right, coma. <laughs> yeah. But Enzo's attire, that you're there, it needs an apostrophe, that it's there, the bit lower down. I don't know where I'm pointing at here, because this is a green screen. It's not actually a f***ing wall with a TV screen miraculously floating there, you bunch of dirty marks. That it's, that needs an apostrophe as well. That grammar there, it's looser. Then Loose Women, the popular lunchtime talk show on ITV1 or here over in England. And believe me, those women, they are loose. Wait, they call themselves Loose Women, so how loose do you f***ing think they are? Kofi Kingston getting eliminated like that? WTF, mother New Day, strong as out, closing in on Demolition's Tag Team Championship reign record in a match that they were the centrepiece of, and there they were, one move basically, out of there, gone forever. WTF. They may win a bit badly with bow. I can talk English. They were made to look as weak as piss. WTF. Look at how close Rhino and Luke Gallows are to the ropes there. And Big Cass, who those big chunky legs belong to, doesn't do a single f***ing thing to save his teammate. WTF, Big Cass. You are a sh team player. There is no, no Cass in team. Oh, that didn't f work, did it? Cast their head and over the top rope to get his sh in before the three counted even being counted. Just f it knock them out. Save your partner. Win the match. It would have been I. He won the match anyway, didn't he? So, you know, at the end of the day, all f irrelevant, wasn't it? F Fucking hell, when did Jimmy Neutron become so goddamn sexy? Look at that referee there, he hasn't moved a pissing muscle as Baron Corbin comes in to knock the shit out of Brian Kendrick so that Brian Kendrick could win that Cruiserweight Championship match via disqualification. The bellman at ringside had to ring the bell before the referee called it because the referee, he lost all his shit, he lost his arsehole, his arsehole fell out. He didn't know what the f was going on so the bellman had to steer him through those choppy f***ing waters. That's Waters and Geordie. So the Cruiserweights are staying on Monday night. Raw, f me, how wrong could they be? This is no s*** given times three. Number one, nobody gives a s*** about the division. Number two, nobody will give a s*** about 205 Live after two relentless hours of SmackDown. The crowd are going to be tired out after a big main event. And out come the Cruiserweights. People we know nothing about, nobody will give a s***. 205 Live will be cancelled and taped pre-recorded before SmackDown and aired after in a matter of weeks. You mark my words, you dirty marks. And number three, nobody gives a flying sh** about this Baron Corbin and Kalisto rival that looks like getting back on track after the result of this match. Nobody gives a sh** times three. God, I'm f***ing good at maths, aren't I? You know that promo I bring up every pissing WTF moment video where Vince McMahon said he wanted Raw and SmackDown to go head-to-head -head on everything from merchandise sales to TV ratings? Can you f***ing believe it? Despite it being the biggest plot hole in WWE today, they aired it as part of the promo package for the men's singles team match thing. The biggest match of the card. The second biggest match of the card. Bah! The constant advertisement of Raw shows on SmackDown shows and SmackDown shows being advertised on Raw shows. It just makes no sense after that promo from Vince. But there they are, slotting it back into our memories, making it front and centre when it should be forgotten about because it's irrelevant in the day. All that Vince said back then are f***ing lies. And I thought the days of me bringing them up in these videos were f***ing over, but it looks like we're back to square f***ing one. Thank you, WWE. Make the shows five hours now. Four hours isn't long enough for me. During that promo, even Vince said, I want competition. That promo took place in July. We're now in November at Survivor Series. The whole narrative of the show is a f***ing lie. He wanted competition in July all year round, not just in November for one bloody week. Oh, competition, my ass, My ass, competition. My ass, Bullshit bollocks. Corey Graves, Otunga, were you responsible for shipping him, Ellsworth, over the border 
David Otunga. <sighs> At least Dave made a fucking noise, but Dave, as we all know, you were sh at your job. You should just leave Mountain Law School. That's where you belong, not behind commentary and not behind a commentary desk that was playing musical chairs. What the f*** was going on there? Just after four or three best commentators from each brand commentate the whole event and stop this utter bullshittery. And where was Tom Phillips? He's more valuable to Smackdown than David Otunga is and he wasn't even included on the show. Justice for Tom. Stop the Tom Spiracies. More of the Tom Markery than we saw at NXT TakeOver. Yep there. Toronto. Nearly forgot there, but we got there in the end. If you don't know what I mean, go and watch that WTF Moments video. We need your clickbait hits. <laughs> that sign there that reads AJ is my soccer coach. He isn't like, he's a professional wrestler. Braun Strowman finally wearing a pair of trousers. That's how the Scottish people say trousers. That makes him look like he hasn't pissed himself. Hey! Hang on, no! Braun's got no f***ing legs anymore! What? Yes, because they are camouflage. Therefore, we can't see his legs. F***ing laugh. Sethy Poo, Seth Rollins, Titan Tron, when it fades to black, a long sentence appears. I don't know what it says. My version of the show was pretty sh so I couldn't see what it says. Then that goes away, and then the word Sergeant SGT Slaughter appear. I suppose you should do that that way, since you're watching me die. Flip reverse it, Blazer Squad reference, keeping them alive in 2016. Anyway, it still says Sergeant Slaughter during Seth Rollins' entrance, entrance, then in Titantron. Why? WTF. What's he got to do with Seth? What's Seth going to do with him? I don't f***ing know. I don't f***ing care. It's shut a clock, motherfuckers! I can't believe it! I think it's the hat trick it might be for! I don't care! It's in there anyway! Get in there! Bray Wyatt, John says, the eater of words. Jennifer, husband, my love for Corey Graves just went through the roof. We constantly hear that waste of pissing oxygen. David Otunga calling out the Miz for using Maurice, his wife, to get ahead. Even though we all know that Dave himself uses his wife, pop sensation Jennifer Hudson, to get ahead in film roles and shit like that. He uses her status to get in places like movie sets and shit like that. Because, to be honest, who the f*** wants to hire a boring prick like him? He might look like a goddess. A goddess? A god. But he's f***ing boring as shit. Jennifer does all the work for him. And there's Corey, calling him out on it, doing my job for me. Corey, I f***ing love you. It's John O'Clock again, motherfuckers! I can't believe it! This time we had John claiming The Undertaker does not have Twitter, but I looked and there it is. It says official and everything, right? I know, it's not got the blue tick, but I f***ing love screaming John O'Clock and you love it too! Adam Parmesan, you love it! <laughs> Undertaker's got Twitter. Aye, that's true, isn't it? It's John O'Clock again, motherfuckers! This time we have JBL blaming Raw for the existence of the Gobbledygooker, even though we all know that the Gobbledygooker was around in Survivor Series 1990, a full two years before Raw was even a thing. John, do some fucking research and stop me doing this to you. I don't like doing it to you. You don't like me doing it to you. Unless you do like his doing the tea. You sick bastard, John! You dirty, you, you dirty man. Back to Mago Cole, who claimed that Raw don't get involved with all the silliness that comes with mascots like SmackDown were doing with James Ellsworth. That's despite the fact that the Raw women's team had Dana Brooke as a mascot, and the fact the Raw's tag team team had Xavier Woods as a mascot. SmackDown just had Ellsworth all night. Raw had two mascots of their very own meaning. Raw had more mascots than SmackDown, and Cole was being a massive hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Shane McMahon selling his schneck and his mouth, even though Chris Jericho, quite clearly there, kicked him in the tits. It's John O'Clock, motherfuckers. Hooray. We have that moment where John said Shane blocked that with his face, even though quite clearly that drop kick or whatever the f it is, I can't remember, it was a four hour pissing show where a lot happened. That kick registered exactly how it was meant to. Shane blocked nothing, he took it full on in the chops. Just like I wish I could punch John full on in the chops. Cause I'd f***ing knock him out, wouldn't I? <laughs> Braun Strowman tries to murder AJ Styles. Yes, I think that spot was supposed to happen, but I don't think that AJ was supposed to get his two ankles caught on the top rope, forcing his body to flip reverse and flip the land on the back of his neck on the ring apron, which of course, as we all know, is the hardest part of the ring. Braun, just make sure AJ clears the rope next time, you irresponsible bastard. 
If you want to fight as well, Braun, I'll f***ing take you on and I'll bite that wonky nose of yours off! <laughs> yes, because I'm a f***ing scientist and a poet and an all-round swell guy, I am here to question the physics of that James Ellsworth and Braun Strowman spot. Braun is that big, James is that small, surely Braun could have just lifted his leg and sent James flying out of the arena exactly where he deserves to be in the f car park, you know? Braun's big, James is small, one kick he would have been flying, but no, somehow James' little arms managed to keep Braun and those big muscly legs of his, those big legs that seemingly don't exist anymore because they weren't f***ing there! Grounded. That spear that Roman Reigns did onto Shane McMahon, gnarly as it was, WTF, I'm not quite sure what this is, I don't know the deets of the situation, but Shane looked like he was absolutely f***ed. Roman Reigns f***ing up the boss's son now, <laughs> coupled with the old wellness policy violation. I don't think his future's looking very bright. Of course it f***ing is, it's Roman Reigns, what the f*** am I talking about? But anyway, Shane looked f***ed. WTF. Shane McMahon shouts at Chris Jericho, small package in the entire bastard world heard. Rather than believe it was for the spot that happened immediately after the call, I like to think that Shane McMahon was just shouting, you've got a small willy at Chris Jericho in front of the world so we all could hear and laugh. Smith, small willy Jericho. Hey Jericho, I guess your dick must be that smile that you need all those diamonds and that sparkle crotchness, the vajazzle as we call it over here, to accentuate and to, to Get your eyes away from the small penis. Ooh, diamonds. This time we have Randall Keith Orton completely getting kayfabe there and shattering it into a thousand pieces. After Shane McMahon was f***ed around, he rolled out the ring even though the camera was on him. He went to the barricades and talked to Shane McMahon's son, presumably telling him his dad was all right. Isn't that nice? What a thoughtful human being Randy is. Bullshit! Randy's now a Wyatt. He should have been hopping over that barricade and biting that young boy's head off. They're evil bastards, a part of a cult. Sacrificial lambs and whatnot. They shouldn't be caring about people's feelings. Especially when the camera's on them. It made no f***ing sense. Just like one of Bray Wyatt's promos, which is just a group of lovely words put together in a fashion that sounds nice. It's John <laughs> again, motherfuckers. motherfuckers. I've lost count. I don't know where I am. What the f***? is happening. This time we have John talking about these guys, Orton, Wyatt and Styles, saying they're all closers. They know how to win matches. Oh, John. Oh, John, John, John. Bray Wyatt, where the f*** have you been for the past two years, John? Bray Wyatt's lost every bloody match. I know he won the last one he had at the big pay-per-view, but he's lost them all before. He, he, he barely ever closes. If he was a door, it'd be constantly open. He's, his hinge must be broken or his lock must be snapped. I f***ing don't know, but he loses all the time. Apart from last night where he won the match for SmackDown. But still the point stands. He's lost enough not to deserve that close attack. JBL, you f***ed up and you know you did. I'm right, you're wrong, as ever. The Raw and SmackDown before Survivor Series made absolutely no f***ing sense. Every inch of storyline was completely forgotten as the superstars put their differences aside just for the greater good of each brand. Ooh, we're going to get along, but I don't like you anyway, they all said. And then we had examples like Bailey being a heel on SmackDown Live. Storyline thrown as far away as the eye can see. WTF. But then all of a sudden, despite the fact that the continuation of these storylines was still disregarded all the way through Survivor Series, we got to the main event. Or the, not the main event. The main event before the main event. The five on five men's match. Where Dean Ambrose cost AJ Styles f Smackdown in the arse. WTF. You just can't forget about storylines for the week building up the Survivor Series and then bring one of them back when you feel like it. Continuation, all that stuff. What well, good for the geese, good for the gander. It made no f***ing sense. Roman Reigns doesn't like Spaniards. Seth Rollins and he were going to put AJ Styles through the German announced table and then Roman was like, nah, we do what I want. We're going to put you through the Spanish table because Spaniards, the two Spanish commentators, I don't like you. Why doesn't he like Spaniards? Why are we seeing xenophobia here? Did Roman vote for Trump? Who knows? The possibilities are endless. End of the day though, he hates Spaniards and we need to know why. It's Sonic of Clock once again, Alvin! This time we have John with an incorrect Gilligan's Island reference. Here we go, I'll run you through because you're all so f***ing interested, aren't you? Oh, 
Oh, where are we? He claims that Roman Reigns, who was the sole survivor for Raw going up against the Wyatts, that he was Gilligan and he was alone going up against multiple odds like the Wyatts were. When in fact, as we all know, Gilligan was not alone on that island as the intro, the catchy little ditty for that show describes. Gilligan was on the island with the skipper, the millionaire, the millionaire's wife and the movie star and the rest. There was a f load of people on that island, not just Gilligan. Roman was all alone. That little thing doesn't apply what John was trying there, so he f***ed up again. That's not like John, is it? Arsehole. Shoo, boom. It's John o'clock again, motherfucker! I can't believe it! Raw wins, Maggle! Raw wins, Maggle! Raw wins, Maggle! After Bray Wyatt, who was representing SmackDown, pinned Roman Reigns of Raw to win the match for SmackDown. Fuck. 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 Diddly fuck. Fuck. John's commentated on SmackDown for four or five months now. Yet he still thinks he's representing Raw. Bray Wyatt's been on SmackDown for maybe five months now. But John thinks he's on SmackDown. Roman Reigns been on Raw for four or five months now. But John, he thinks he's on SmackDown. Does this man know anything that's going on? No. But that's why he keeps me in a job. The sign that read, I heart STI. What does STI mean? I don't know. The only STI that I know is sexually transmitted infection. I hear that gonorrhea is bloody spiffy at this time of year. What the f is that sign? Oh, f***ing, oh, dog. Right, here we are at the end. What a load of sh that Brock Lesnar and Goldberg match was. Two spears and a jackhammer. I suppose that Goldberg's wife and son are still waiting to see Billy Big Bollocks wrestling a match because he didn't wrestle last night. He just did the two moves that we've seen on Raw in previous weeks. We didn't see any form of wrestling whatsoever from Bill. He did f all. He lied to his wife. He lied to his son. What a bad human being he is. Quite frankly, there's absolutely no upside to this match result whatsoever. I know Brock couldn't dine out on that streak break and win forever, but surely WWE did that, so eventually when the man who defeats Brock does so, he's a ready-made star. He's beat the man that ended the streak. We have a new Bertie Big Bollocks on the scene, but no, they gave it to a man who's 50 years old and a goatee that's whiter than Kerwin White himself. I mean, after this, where does Bill go from here? He's now 2-0 up against Brock Lesnar, meaning that he's won any potential miniseries they were going to book if they have another match against Brock. If Brock wins, he's still 2-1 down against Bill. Then do we have another match? And then do we have another match after that so they could win the best of five? Who the f*** knows? We just don't know where he's going to go from here. The fans in the arena, they were cheated. The fans at home, they were cheated. We were hoping for 15 minutes of ball bust in action. 15 minutes of two men just beating you the sh out of each other. But what we got was the squashiest of squash matches. What a load of bollocks. WWE, you set of bellends. This match should have deleted any memory of WrestleMania 20 from our minds, but no, somehow it was worse. At least both men got some offense in 12 years ago. At least there was some action to see, as boring as it was. But no, this time it was worse. We only saw Bill getting any offense in. Brock did f all. It was worse than WrestleMania 20. They could have done anything that would have been better than WrestleMania 20, but no, somehow they made it worse than WrestleMania 20, and I'm gonna lose my shit. Richard, you better run, I might kick the shit out of you, I'm not angry at the minute. Not only all of that, but they had the WCW guy beating the WWE guy in the build up. We heard endless references to Bill Streak and WCW, how he defeated everybody in sight in WCW, how you know. He was all right in WWE, but we didn't hear how Triple H f***ed him in the arse. But still, we heard it was quite good in WWE. But at the end of the day, this was fantasy warfare. WCW, WWE, a man who we didn't think would think another man coming together. But no, you know, the Monday Night Wars, the Sting WrestleMania match where WWE still clearly think the f***ing Monday Night Wars are alive. It didn't make any sense in that. I'm rambling. I don't know what words are coming out of my mouth. I'm not f***ing pissed off. Finally, all that hype, the video game, the weeks of promos, all that shit, and then the promo package for the match that was there just before the first bell, it lasted longer than the match itself. WTF, Richard, get me a f***ing cigarette, please. And in the midst of all that, that wasn't even the final point. The final point is why the f*** was Bill Goldberg's son shirtless? Bill went to see him at ringside. He had a shirt on. Bill walked a bit up the ramp. He came back to see his Ben, and then all of a sudden, he was shirtless. Why? 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 
I don't want to see a ten-year-old boy shirtless. Do you? If you do, you're a f***ing nonce! Right then, f*** me. This video must be about 25 minutes long, but that's what you get when WWE air four-hour shows. I've been King Ross. You've been my little subjects. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow.